for those of you who watched the initial unboxing and just quick first impressions of this 50 litre air compressor or silent air compressor or no yeah pretty pleased with it you'll also know uh, that it ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger like this but what we're gonna do is this and this is that video so unless you've miraculously clicked on this video without looking at the thumbnail or the title this video is all about fitting a mist coolant system to my CNC machine so before we go too much further, I had planned towards the end of this video, once I've got the mist coolant system installed, is to run it dry and just see how fast I can go or if it gums up and how long it takes to come up and then try it with the mist on, you know, and give myself a bit of a delta. However, um, this spindle's make, well, it's been making a funny noise for a while now. Um, let me bring you in closer and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, it's developed a little bit of a knock sound, so you can hear it when it spins up as well it seems to go through a bit of a resonance uh, before it gets to full speed uh, so I'll bring the microphone in so you know I'm no spindle expert but that doesn't sound right so underneath here there's a little set ring here with two little holes in it that um, kind of ring span or pin span I would go into so it might just be the preload on the bearings that's uh, you know, not as good as it should be. Or, you know, I've had this probably 12, 14 years and it's supposed to really be a high speed router spindle. And it spent most of its poor life uh, cutting aluminium up to 20 mil thick. So it's made a lot of parts. So it could be the bearings on the way out. I don't know. So it's maybe not going to be the most rigid comparison, but at least we can do, you know, before and after and just see how we get on. And this might have to be a project for another day. Um, I don't know whether I'll upgrade this or just take it apart, repair it. Uh, lots of options. Anyway, we're here for a different project, so let's get on with that. Now, I'm not the first to do this kind of thing. There's loads of these all out on the internet. So um, this is by no means a guide. This is just me having my first go at making one. It may work well, it may not. I don't know. We'll find out and then we'll learn from there. So I bought a, a usual selection of parts it might need, uh, including the water filter a lot of people seem to use and a load of different sort of push fit fittings um, I got this as well I don't know if these are any good but this is a kind of mixer where air goes in one and the and the coolant goes in the other and then you've got a little nozzle at that end you know it's eBay special so I've also got a regulator and a pressure gauge and then I think over here I wasn't sure if I was going to use this or not this is a 24 volt relay so you've got a 24 volt relay and then that controls the on-off flow through there. So I thought I might have a remote button that just you know, push it and it sprays mist or maybe even get the CNC controller to turn it on and off. Yeah, just your basic uh, relay. I don't know if I'm going to use that yet but I thought it wasn't that expensive. Um, I do have some 6mm uh, tubing which is a good fit for I think these fittings. One set came with that, I can't quite remember now. Which I think are a push fit in there, or a six. Um, but I've just noticed that this unit needs a four and an eight. So I need to get some more tubing if I want to use those. Now I am a little bit worried about the end there, if you can see. That hole's pretty big there, and ideally that I think should be a little bit smaller. So if I use my go no go gauges or uh, twist drills, uh, this one is two millimeters, and that's an stay in frame. That is an easy sort of baggy fit really and three millimeter won't go at all so it's probably about two and a half millimeter hole and ideally that should be closer to maybe 0 0.8 0 0.7 somewhere around there but you know if we get to that point it looks like this unscrews I could either turn the whole thing again or maybe just insert press fit something in there with a little bit of a tube on it a bit of brake line or something like that well we'll have a look anyway that's what we got um, we've got a load of various Manifolds, right angles, straights, you know, just bought a kit of these, not too expensive. Again, push fit. I think these are six. And then uh, some uh, Euro, I think these are Euro quick release fittings, not PLC style. So um, Euro is what's on my uh, compressor, so I've gone with that. And a few more there. And I think that's it for now. Uh, yeah, there's a bracket that holds the thing on. And, oh, filter on and then that's obviously the spanner to release it and that's my start for 10 so I'll go and offer some of these bits up to the machine and figure out what my plan's going to be. So 
I haven't fully decided, but in my mind I'd kind of got the idea that uh, this would probably go like that and then it would go on the end here. But you can see that there isn't really enough room. I could make a custom bracket, that's an option, but obviously this is going to this is going to move away and it's got to clear this so it's got to sit somewhere like that and uh, when I'm changing this I obviously don't want to do it here I've got to be able to get it off so that's okay we can move the y-axis in and there's plenty of uh, space between these two rails to drop it and swap it out and fill it or whatever so I think that place looks good it's just that the first problem is obviously that bracket is not going to go there now it doesn't fit the other way there's some bits of the plastic are in the way so I can't even use it with the bracket upside down. So first job will probably be if it's going to go here, a custom bracket. And then we've got our in there and our out there going down to the nozzle. Something like that. That's the start anyway. And I think some of the hoses will come down here through the drag chain and all the way down to here. Down to there and then off the end. Yeah, the compressor's down here. And CNC machine, that's just the edge of it there. So I've got to run some, some of the hoses will come off here, maybe a manifold here. I think what I want, I haven't fully decided, but I think what I want is a kind of box of tricks, if you like, here, so that it's um, you can either have it running or you can have it on auto, maybe. So when the CNC machine starts and it puts G-code out to put the mist on, it will trigger it. Um, or I might just want to, I might want to run that manually. The other thing I'm thinking of, I've seen some systems where they have a twin line and another line of just the high pressure air rather than just the, the spray mix. And so you can blast things out and you can have like a just a momentary push button. So that's quite a nice idea. And then maybe that would run the relay. I don't know, maybe I maybe have to get two relays, one for each of those functions. That uh, sort of thing I'm thinking of. So something down here, uh, some kind of box with an interface of some kind in it that I can uh, use. And then down to the compressor. That's my thoughts anyway. Is imagine this is my compressor, there'll be a drop down regulator, whatever pressure I want that to be run at. Then I've got my a T valve here, and some of that will come off down this way. This is going to be the very high pressure air. I've got a solenoid here. Now, the way I've got this sort of mocked up at the moment, so it'll be another one of those. Um, on this control box, there'll be this momentary switch. So when you push that in, the valve will fire open, and you'll get high pressure air just blasting your workpiece just to clear chips momentarily. Um, that's one option. There might be a way to do it where um, the button itself is manually just pushes onto the solenoid. You know, I could manual uh, re manual solenoid would that be a manual air valve, rather than it being electronic from here to there. Anyway, that's one way to do it. Um, and then what we got? So that goes. That's our just our blast air. That's just uh, intermittent air as and when. The main route then is through here so as long as the system's activated running this uh, solenoid is open we'll get air into here this will be regulated down to around 20 psi and then it goes into that t valve there and so then two things happen one is that 20 psi air comes along here and it enters the chamber here and then because you've got your fluid it will just push 20 psi onto the fluid and that will press down on that fluid but it can't kind of go anywhere at that point and that will force the fluid to go up this pipe which you may be able to just about see hopefully down there it's the other end of this bit of pipe here and it will force because that's under the, the that's sitting right at the bottom of that fluid it will force that fluid out there a bit like an aerosol can works so pressurized air at the top push that out there that goes out through here through that outlet over there and that then goes over to the mixer block so let me show you where this air that's teed off here and the fluid that comes out of here then meet. So now you can see a better shot of it. Here's our mixer block. So we've got our 20 psi air that bypasses everything and just goes up to here and that will blast out onto the work. Comes out 20 psi or thereabouts. And then the other one, the high pressure fluid mix will go through this small tube, goes into there through this mixer and then because it's under pressure it shouldn't vaporize as much. That's the idea um, because it's forced in under pressure. It's not like it's a vacuum sucking the fluid in and it should come out as a mist that doesn't go into the air too much that's the basic idea anyway so that's that side of it and then down here I've got my intermittent you'll have to pretend this electrical plug is uh, basically where the and it won't be this this is you know there'll be a, a nozzle probably a bit like that but this is just to give you the rough idea uh, that comes from my high pressure size that's straight out of the compressor whatever pressure that is set to on the regulator on the compressor it comes through here as long as I press this down momentarily it will blast just a momentary blast of high pressure air there just to clear 
chips admittedly uh, but the main unit will be this and this will be our mist coolant so i think again um, i don't want to reinvent the wheel this has been done many many times um i think that's what i'm going to do it's really just a matter of what's the most elegant plumbing what am i going to box together into a, a unit and just making it all work and tucked away nicely okay yeah i think that's it <laughs> It made a bit of progress. I've decided because this is like a proof of concept, just you know, not use this kind of stuff before, this push fit stuff, and you know, uh, is this going to work and so on and so on. I just want to get something temporarily on there, just see what happens, and then if it really works, so well, I can learn from there and make something a little bit better. So I just found this piece of scrap and just cut it down to a rough size. So it's got a few extra little holes in it, but uh, it's okay because we're just going to try it out. Uh, and then I've just been mounting these onto here now. I don't know. If you look at that at the side view, I don't know if these are happy to run at an angle. You can see that one, for example, looks like it pulls it around. Whether that's going to leak, I don't know, we'll find out. If it does, I'll have to do something different, but you can see there's quite a height difference between there and there, and these bolts are only, or screws are only so long. Uh, so we'll see how we go. We might have to uh, make some big posts and get some very long screws if that's the case. Anyway, that's kind of how far we got with that bit. And the bit I'm about to make next is a holder to hold this piece on because obviously that's it's going to just move around too much. So I've just taken off as a lock screw that goes onto that piece there, and then the handle goes on top. Just taking those off, and I've got a little plate here, and I've just been working out uh, sort of dimensions really. So there'll be a hole there, which will take that, and then this thing will be cut out, and it'll have two little fixings at the bottom, and it'll screw into the side of this piece, so it's sort of screwing like that. And then that hole there, that will push through, and we'll put that uh, red captive nut on, and that should hold that in place. And that's the kind of rough scheme. So while well, I go ahead and make that, because it'll just be uh, just cutting, drilling, nothing too exciting, I'll just show you what this looks like as it currently stands on the side of the machine. Okay, so I've decided to put this one roughly there. You can see I've got those little marks just to mark out. I'm going to screw it on, some little M5 fixings, so that'll be like that. And then next to it, I've still got to make the bracket at the top. Uh, I have to make a custom bracket because it, uh, it doesn't fit on otherwise. The one they give you, the fixings would be in space at the top, so that'll be like that. I've got to have it high enough so that it clears the base. You can't quite see, but the edge of the machine here, so it's got to sit somewhere like that. Well, I couldn't leave it like that, could I? So uh, I've made these posts a bit longer, ordered some longer screws, and now it's all nice and level. So I'm much happier with that. Uh, the only thing I'm not happy about is obviously I'm using this bit of scrap plate and it already had a few sort of holes in it from whatever it was used for before. Uh, we'll see how we get on. If this works, I'll either make a new one um, or adapt and learn from this if I need to move anything around. Um, or if this works and I don't need to change anything, maybe I can make use of a couple of these holes uh, to make a nice cover. Anyway, let's go and mount this thing to the machine. So I've already drilled and tapped these holes here so it should go on nice and easy. Uh, one thing I'm worried about is, now I've put the, this cap back on and this screw, is whether I can tighten this down enough to change the pressure because that plate's quite thick. So what I may end up doing is having to machine that plate a bit thinner to allow that lock nut there to go further on and then allow me to do this up. But let's put some pressure in it and uh, we'll see. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll just modify this plate and make it a bit thinner. Right, let's screw that in. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. So the air will come out of the compressor through the regulator, goes to this point here, through this elbow, through the solenoid, and this is controlled either with a push button or it might be from the CNC machine. Anyway, when this is on, air will come through here and then this will be limited down to uh, about 20 psi so I've read seems like a good pressure to use goes to this T piece that splits in two so one of those will go into the filter bottle and we'll sort of, uh, put pressure on that to push the liquid down and then from the bottom of that there'll be a pipe that feeds that liquid into the mixer block 
and then the other one that goes around here is the high pressure air that also goes into the mixer block and then they'll join over there and then that will spray uh, using a high pressure rather than a suction venturi type effect. That's the idea anyway. Alright, so the next thing is to have a look at the uh, filter bottle itself. So I've got these adapters. These are, well actually this is interesting. Uh, there's the box uh, somewhere on here. Yeah, it says the fittings are three quarter BSP and somewhere it said they're straight, uh, straight thread. So three quarter BSP, straight thread. No arguing with that, is there? Right, so what I then bought was these, which are three quarter BSP thread on the outside, uh, male, and then on the inside, two quarter inch NPT, and then the push fit. Uh, it seemed like the easiest way to do it. However, there was no way they were gonna go in there. And so, uh, I think where I went in the end, I think I went to a local plumbing hardware place and just said, well, what have you got? He did have a fitting that would go into here and confirm that it's not three quarters BSP, it's half inch BSP. So that's what I went with, but he only had right angle off to some other device. You know, he didn't really have this adapter. But having confirmed the size, I was able to go on eBay and buy these. I think they're about seven pound each. Um, so that's a half inch BSP uh, to a quarter inch NPT, National Pipe Thread for the States, um, and then a push fit of six millimeters. So that's old British Imperial, although still used widely around the world. Quarter inch NPT, American, into metric six millimeter, French, and everywhere else. Well, it works. What a world we live in, eh? Anyway, the next thing I need to make then is there's an adapter plate uh, that goes on top there. So I need to pick up off these four holes and make a plate that goes out there and then there'll be a piece on the back of the machine that will bolt onto. And because it's going to be quite heavy, it'll be moving around and shaking. Um, I want to make that pretty chunky, so reasonably thick, so maybe some 8, 10 mil aluminium plate. Um, yeah, just to make sure it doesn't shake around too much or break off. Right, let's go and get some stock, cut some stuff out and drill some holes and I'll see you back in a bit. Okay, and after a bit of machining and drilling some holes, we got this. So this is the plate that will go on top of there and then that will be held in place with those, I think they're little self-tapping threads that go into the plastic in there. And then the bit at the back, we'll go into those two tapped holes there. Got two M5 fixings, and then there's two holes there that connect it onto the machine. Basically a pretty chunky L bracket. Uh, so we'll offer that up to the machine in a minute, make sure it's going to fit, and then maybe I'll make this look a bit nicer, paint it or something, don't know. But let's just make sure it's going to fit first. Now one of these, oh, it was that one. These are only very light skims just to bring it to the final dimension on the CNC machine. And I don't know if you can see that, but... Yeah, there's quite a lot of, uh, sort of striations along there, little stripes. And I, I don't know for sure, but it might be that free play I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, or a little knocking sound. So I don't know if the bearings are on the way out. It's done a lot of aluminium. It's done a really good service. Uh, or yeah, whether it just needs the, the preload system setting again. Anyway, this is only cosmetics. So it doesn't really matter, but I think it's a symptom that I need to look into. It's projects all the way, isn't it? Right. Let's offer this up and see where we're at. Okay, I've just put the bracket together and then I've just put two of the screws in, doesn't really matter because it's got to come apart now. Now things you've got to watch for are, well, the base here, because obviously this is going to move and it will come over here. If it's too low, it will hit that just in frame. Yeah, so it will hit that bit there or if it's too low, it might catch that cable. So I need to be you know, a reasonable amount above that and allow for, I need to run any future cabling along here. So just make sure I've got maybe a 10 mil gap there. Uh, I don't really want to come too far forward because it will look like it's you know not really aligned properly. I need to keep it a bit compact, but not too far rearward. So I've got space uh, around here so it doesn't hit this um, and enough so I can get the pipe back as well. Not too far up, otherwise it'll look stupid like it's hung off the top, if I can get away with it anyway. So between all those four dimensions, hopefully, there's a nice little slot where you know it's obviously it looks like it's, it's meant to be. So uh, I'll line that up and then I'll just put a pencil mark. Um, then I'll get the bracket back on there, drill and tap it, and I'll bring you back in a minute when it's all nicely screwed in place. 
Right, see you on the other side. Okay, looks pretty good. Plenty of clearance around here, clearance there. Take this on and off. And yep, yeah, that'll clear there as well. Doesn't stick out too far. Yeah. Looking good. Ah, there was one more thing I was going to ask. Uh, for those of you who have used these before, um, I noticed, yeah, just there, there's a screw which feeds into this upper chamber here. So if you take that out, there's a hole all the way through. Now, I was wondering what that was for, whether it was for a little auxiliary, auxiliary sort of cable to fill it. I wondered actually if it could be used as, you know, those. Um, on steam engines you have that little relief valve or on pressure cookers that pops up if the pressure gets too much. I wondered, if, does anyone know, um, could that be used for that? So, you know, if this is, I don't want this to explode basically, so if this is at, um, let's say 20 psi, if I set that to be 30, if it went over 30 it would just pop the pressure off there. Another thing that might be useful is if, once you've finished using this and you want to do a bit of maintenance or you just want to make sure it doesn't leak overnight or whatever, you could just maybe just pull this valve and just release any residual pressure in here. Uh, I think there'll be some because there should be pressure pushing uh, between when this is off, there'll be pressure in this side of the line up to the liquid, um, any that it can't quite push out you know, when it's off. And it might be nice to drain that out. So yeah, if anyone knows if there's a way of, you know, if there's a little pressure relief valve that can go in there, um, maybe I'll take that out and just have a look, see what fitting it is. Well, anyway, that's something for the future. Ah, I can't wait that long. I've just literally just taken it out. So this is the screw that comes out. Good news is, well, a couple of things, it is actually um, a screw. So there is a proper thread in there, probably um, moulded in, uh, insert brass or steel or something. And then it does have, does have a little o-ring on it there. So it's obviously meant to have a pressure seal, which means either it's for an auxiliary pipe or maybe I'm guessing that is let's have a look M4 maybe let's have a look yeah probably M4 um, so is there such a thing as an M4 safety valve that I can set I don't know 30 maybe 40 p um, what do we want? 30, 40 psi? Just so I don't explode this, basically. If you've got any comments, let me know. Okay, now I'm going to fit the mixer block and the lock line. Again, I think that hole is too big, but let's see what we, yeah, what it does. I think there'll be a lot of fluid coming out of there, and uh, we'll adjust it. Let's let's just see what happens first, and then um, I've just got a bit of tape on those in case any swarf or anything goes in. And I've drilled and tapped two little holes. I decided I th think I put it on the front. I was thinking about putting it sort of down here. So the, the hoses are a little bit out the way onto this side here. Um, but then this ended up being a little far away. And yeah, I guess I could buy more of these. But it's getting a little bit far away. And also, you know, if you're filming or just looking in there or trying to change uh, the bits in the collet, it is always in the way. So I've gone for it being in the middle there. So it's a bit closer. It's out of your way. And then also I've just turned these... Uh, these, ro these just rotate around simply. Turn them 90 degrees and then the pipe will come out around here and up to there. So let's get this fixed in place. So as you can see, that, that can go into there and get pretty close. Obviously that goes up and down. That's currently probably about 20, 30 mil away. Um, 
if I need to, I guess I can buy more of this and um, clip some more in and insert it. I assume it's a standard sort of lock line stuff. Yeah, looks okay, at least from that end. I say, apart from that hole, it's probably a bit too big, but let's get it running first and see where we end up. Right, next, I think we need to look at the plumbing. Okay, the first connection I'm going to make is this uh, six millimeter pipe that goes from here off the T-piece into here, and that just pressurizes the top of the liquid, so it's always pushing it down, and then that's forcing it through. So I've just cut this short piece. These are these push-fit connectors that uh, look pretty neat, and they've got little uh, jaws in there that grab it and stop it pulling out, and there's a seal as well, uh, which just means you basically just push it in like that until it's fully home, and then that's it. That shouldn't leak. If you need to get it out, you just press this down, and it releases the claws, and you can pull the cable out. Let's get that in there, or the pipe rather, in there. Nice, I like that. Right, so this is the four millimeter hose, so we'll do that next. Right, we'll just have to stop what we're doing there. <laughs> Wife was sitting in her office and uh, the back of the chair just completely fell off and apparently she fell off with it and landed on the floor. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, so this is what's happened. So that's, that's the, the, that should go through there, and then that uh, eight millimeter big bolt thing, and it goes into there and fixes it, but you can see the last two threads are completely gone, and basically it was only really just in about that much. You know, there was no, no real depth into that nut, and that was one problem. The second problem is when it's in there like that, as you can see, there's no kind of torque tube, there's no space or anything like that. So it's basically just on the end of the thread holding it in. And all that force over the years, it's, uh, it's broken it. So, luckily, I have a lathe. So I turned this up. Well, I kind of had it already. I just modified it a little bit. So that's our spacer. I'll go in there. And then uh, the deluxe model. I've got the uh, incremental handle there. And I had a little spare washer, brass one. So we'll use that. So let's put that together and hopefully... That will do it. So I've given it plenty of thread engagement and then you know, nice generous washers, hopefully. Somewhere there. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Right, we'll take this back in. Try not to have that kind of look on my face of, see, it was worth buying the lathe, and uh, we'll be back to this project in a minute. Okay, back to this project then. As you can see, I've taken quite a lot of it apart. I've got it on the bench, I'll show you that in a minute. Basically, I went over all the joints and I've wrapped it with PTFE tape, even if it came with a little bit of PTFE already on it from the factory, you know, just in case. Uh, I'm also waiting on a couple of parts to arrive, so let me just show you the bits that still haven't arrived yet. So this is a half inch BSP and it's a parallel thread, so it needs to seal on the face. Um, I've got some what are called doughty washers on order, so they're like a, a composite metal and rubber washer that will form that seal on there. They haven't arrived yet, but when they do I can put those on there and that will form a nice seal on that side and this side. So on this side, I'm waiting for the proper fitting to arrive. This is a quarter inch to six millimeter, but obviously the pickup pipe that comes with it is four millimeters. So that goes into the bottom of the tube. And then this part here will feed up through there and come out through there it needs to form um, a pressure tight seal. And that goes down to the mixer block down there. Um, I had to do a little bit of searching to find what I needed. So what I needed was a quarter inch NPT to four millimeter, and that seemed to be a little bit rarer, but they're on order. And so when they come, we can fit that and finish this off. Now, I did already have, uh, these are push fit four millimeter to six millimeter sort of adapters. So in theory, I could have put an adapter in here, put a little bit of slave six millimeter pipe through there and then gone the adapter back again. But that felt, you know, a bit messy and it's another weak point uh, or an opportunity to leak anyway. So I'll wait till the proper bit arrives and then we can do it properly. So as you can see, I've got this part stripped down and I've taken all these joints out and put some PTFE tape in, even if they had some already on. So you can see from the factory, we would have a little bit on there, but just in case. Uh, the other thing I did was, I wasn't too sure about this, so I've machined, oh there we go, machined the thickness down. So that allows me to lock that on there and then give plenty of travel. Now I did just plug this into my compressor, put a bit of tube on that end, crimped it over, and then set the pressure so that it's at 20. You need a bit of restriction to do that. 
set the pressure so it's about uh, 20 psi. Yeah, so when the first time I turn it on, I don't blow the uh, the filter container up. Uh, obviously, I'll need a little bit of dialing in, but we got that done. Um, yeah, so as soon as those last few bits arrived, we can put this back together and put it on the machine. So all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching me find my way through these systems. I'm quite new to some of these systems here. Um, so if you've built something similar, um, you've got any great ideas, you've seen me do something wrong or something that could be done better, by all means leave me a comment below. And with that, I'll thank you for watching and see you next time. Whoa, hold on. YouTube just sent me notification that I've reached 10,000 subscribers. So, wow. Thank you very much. So I think we need to update our chart. When I think about it, that's an amazing number of subscribers for this small, humble little channel. Uh, that's like 250 double-decker buses full, or 11 A380 jet airliners full of people. Oh, like coming into land to watch this channel. Well, maybe not all of them are regulars, but who knows. Anyway, um, brilliant. So thank you very much uh, for watching this. And uh, yeah, we on that note, we really will see you next time. <laughs>